Hello and welcome to my new video series about the Jababa London system. My name is Johnny and today we're going to take a look at one of the most important tactics you have to know if you want to play the Jababa London system or if you have to face it. You can see the critical position already in the board. It's right to move and win, but take your time. Before we jump right into the game and right into the tactic, I just want to talk a little bit about the Jababa London system itself because it's an official name. If you would search for the Jababa London system on Wikipedia, for example, you won't find an, you won't find an entry. Um, why is it? Well, I guess this opening just don't have an official name right now. I'm not sure how official names are given, but it looks like there is no one right now. So you may ask why I'm calling it the Jababa London system. And the reason is pretty simple. There's a grandmaster. His name is Simon Williams. He's also known as the Ginger GM and he made two video courses about this opening and named it the Jababa London system. So if you, if you think about it, it's quite logic because um, one of the strongest players in the world right now, Badur Jababa, is playing the opening quite uh, frequently. So why don't give him credit, right? And the other thing is that the opening just reminds us on a normal London system because of the bishop on f4 you can see and so i think it's a logic name right but i think um, you have to know that there are other names around in the internet so here's a list it's also called the jababa attack the jababa pre-attack or some people even even call it the verasov attack um, i think the verasov attack uh, is misleading because it's normal played with bishop on g5 but of course people could argue that it's just a variation of it but i find uh, this is just simply wrong so for my course all you have to know is that if i'm speaking about the jababa london system i mean an opening where we play the pawn to d4 the knight to c3 and then bishop to f4 so without further ado let's get started <laughs> It's a game between Badur Jababa, the man himself, the man that gave his name for the opening, right? Yeah, and his opponent was Giga Kabaratza. Um, the game took place in 2016 at the World Blitz Championship, so it was quite a game, right? And what's important about this game is that Jababa lost it. And it's quite interesting because the tactic I will show you will give you a clearly winning advantage. And Jababa found the tactic and had this advantage, but he still was able to lose the game. But I mean, it was a blitz game after all. So yeah, Kaparazza tried to make the game as complicated as possible. And at a certain point, Jababa just simply went wrong. But as already mentioned, this has nothing to do with the tactic. The tactic is just great, but take this game at a word of advice, you know. You don't win a game most of the time by simply just finding one tactic. You have to play the game until it's over, right? So let's jump right into the game. The game started with the moves d4, knight f6, knight c3, d5 and bishop f4. So far so good. All common stuff for Jababa London system players. And Black decided to attack the center right away with the move c5. That's understandable. And here, White decided to play e3 and gulp the pawn. And in this position, Black's best move would probably have been c takes d4, because after e takes d4 and a6, we reach a position that was reached plenty of times in Grandmaster games. Don't want to go too deep into this position because it has nothing to do with today's lesson. But it was important for me to show you um, the best moves for Black as well. So in the game, Black played a 
logical move that looks natural. Um, he played knight to c6. I mean, developing the knight to the best square cannot be wrong, can it? Yes, it can. <laughs> um, this move's already a big blunder, and it's right to move, and oh, yeah, right can already win material. So, I would advise you to pause the video. I'll give you three seconds to, to do so and try to find um, the best move for white that wins material. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, not a problem. I'm the kind of guy who will give you second chances. And how does it look like if I give you second chances, you may ask? Well, I just give you a simple hint and then I advise you to pause the video again so you have a second try but with a little hint to solve the tactic and I mean if you already solved it then you could think about if the hint um, just goes well with your solution and if not you may should think about your solution because then it's maybe one right so the hint for this position is simple that the c7 square is kind of weak and black would find it hard to defend it so i advise you again to pause the video i give you three seconds and try to find white's best move one two three i hope you all found the solution the right move is knight to b5 it looks kind of pr primitive and to be honest it's pretty simple but black really finds it hard to defend the attack on the c7 square and before we're going to analyze this position a little bit deeper i just want to mention that the move knight to b5 is a really really important motive you have to remember if you want to play the jabba landing system or if you have to face it Whenever black plays a move like c5, you should watch out for this move and think about if it's a good move. I mean, in this position, it's clearly a good move because it's already a winning material, material. but um, it's also in many positions a good move if white doesn't win material right at the spot. For example, let's go back to this position. In this position, black could have played e6. And even here, knight to b5 is a strong move. Why is it, you may ask? Well, how do you defend the c7 square? There's only one good move, and this is knight to a6. And the good thing about this position for white is that white has a simple plan. He pushes pawn to c3, push the other pawn to a4 to, yeah, to boost uh, his uh, knight on b5, right? Then he will develop his knight to f3, his bishop to d3, bringing in the knight to the center to e5, castling short, and the position really plays itself for white. While black uh, finds it really hard to develop himself. I mean, just to understand, this single knight binds two of black pieces. It binds the rook on a8 and the knight on a6. So with one single piece we are able to take out two of black's pieces why is it you may ask well it's pretty simple this knight cannot move because of the threat knight to c3 check knight to c7 check right and this rook cannot move i mean even if the bishop goes to d7 for example the rook ca simply cannot move because then we could grab a pawn on a7 and yeah it's a pretty good position for us you should keep that in mind just try it out for yourself in some blitz games and you will understand it's pretty good. So let's go back to the game. In this position, Black's best move is c5. And I just want to mention that queen to a5 check is possible as well, but after the move c3, Black now has to play b5. And yeah. The positions that will occur after these variations are pretty similar to the ones we will look at shortly. So I decided not to go too deep into this kind of position. It, it most likely will transpose, for example, if white would simply just take this pawn off, black goes in with the knight, and then we simply could take this one. Um, then we will reach a position that we will see shortly in the game. So. 
let's go back. D5 is our move. And here black, um, sorry. And here white has two options. White could take the pawn with his bishop or with a pawn. And both captures are good. So a few um, thought about bishop takes e5. Well, you're right, nothing wrong with this move, but um, the better move, I think, is d takes e5. I play this move and many grandmasters do as well. I analyzed bishop takes e5 in a lead chess study. Um, I will put the link down below in the description of this video. So if you want to know more about bishop takes e5 variation, just check out my lead chess study. The reason I don't like this move as much as d takes e5 is, well, you give up your bishop pair and the resulting positions um, get kind of messy, to be honest. I mean, I always get a feeling that black gets some kind of counterplay, even if the computer says it's all good and white is better, but I think d takes e5 is just a little bit clearer and safer for us. So for this video, we stick with d takes e5. And here, black's best move would have been a6. In the game, Kiparazza played knight to e4, which gives us the possibility of playing another tactic and win another pawn. But before we will see this, I just want to show you the best move because you really have to know what you are doing against a6. Against a6, I suggest you to play the simple knight to c3. And now we have a simple threat. Um, Black's knight on f6 is attacked, and if he moves away, then we could simply take the b5's pawn, and well, I guess then we are clearly winning with being two pawns up and having nice and good center, right? So Black has to do something about it, and the best move here for Black is d4. And now uh, um, we start, um, well, it's a kind of forced sequence. You don't really have to remember, but you should have sawn it at least once um, so that you will find it on the board if you ever would reach this position. And it's kind of forced, so I'm going through it pretty fast. It's e takes f6. Black has to take our knight, otherwise he's down material. Then we will exchange the queen. Black most likely will take it back with the knight, because if he takes it back with the king, then he just runs into rook to d1 checks. So we will take it back with the knight um, we will grab a pawn and he will most probably grab a pawn as well yeah i mean it's possible that he just would develop his bishop to d7 for example because if you would take on g7 then just show it i mean if you would play it that way I, I then black could have some kind of counterplay so if he would just simply develop his um, bishop to d7, just simply don't grab the pawn, just simply go on with our plan like bishop d3. And at a certain point he will grab the pawn and then we will transpose. So we will take, he will take, and now we will develop our bishop. He will give us a kick and we will retreat with our bishop. Don't um, let him take our bishop because our bishop is pretty strong piece on this long diagonal and there's no reason for us to give up this strongly strong bishop. He will develop most likely, and then we will finish our development with knight f3, and we simply, yeah, we simply can stop at this point because we're up on material. We have one pawn more than our opponent, and yeah, I mean, our position is quite good, right? Um, just keep in mind that whenever black will play um, b5, c5, uh, c4 is a good option because if he takes, then you could take back with your bishop and we solved our doubled pawns problems. And if he doesn't, then at a certain point, bishop to e4 looks also pretty tempting and is a good move. So back to the game. And the game. Kiparazza didn't play a6, he played knight to e4, and that's a common mistake. I had this position 
as well in, in my Blitz games because um, at the first glance it doesn't look too bad, but it's actually a mistake and white can win another pawn. So I would advise you to stop the video now and try to solve uh, the puzzle. What's white, uh, white to move and win? What's his best move? One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, here is my hint for this position. Um, a family fork will win the game. Hopefully that helps, right? So, um, pause the video if you need to. I give you three seconds. One, two, three. Well, all right, okay. The winning move for white is queen takes d5. Boom, queen sacrifice. Um, so why does it work? It works because if black take it back, then we have this simple knight to c7 check. And this is a family fork. Whenever a knight attacks a king, a rook and a queen at the same time, it's known as a family fork. So this is why the hint was a family fork will end the tactic or the game. Don't know what I said. Anyway, in this occasion, it would end both if you ask me. And well, yeah, black has to move his king. We could take the queen. And yeah, we could easily stop here, but um, just want to show you three more moves because um, there's a nice little variation. Black could try to play g5. The reason behind this move is that if you move back, then he could take your um, bishop. And if you would take back, then the e4, e5 pawn would be loose. Mm, it's still good for white, um, so there's nothing to worry about. But we have another nice move, and this is the simple bishop to d3. Because if he takes your bishop, you will take the knight. He could take on e3, and now a really nice move, f4. And yeah, this position is clearly better for white. You're up two pawns. Okay, right now you're up one pawn, but the pawn on e3 will fall soon or later. So um, you simply could just develop your knight to f3, as shown on, on the board. You will play a rook to d1, or maybe you will castle alongside. And at a certain point, you will grab the pawn on e3 with the knight, and then you're clearly winning. So, Kibaratze sorted and played queen to a5 check instead. And in this position, Jabava played c3. The best move, no problem. And yeah. Black's best move here would have been a6. Um, after which you should play knight d6 check. And now black could take it with the bishop or with the knight. But in both cases you just simply could take it back with the pawn and well, you're up two pawns. Um, black's king is in danger and you should pretty much running the game. So I analyzed these positions in a leecher study I already mentioned, so just check out the study. You can find the link down below in the video description. It's all free, just go click the link and there you find everything you need. Um, I, won't, I don't want to go too deep into this variation into this video because you have two pawns and Black's King is in danger. You simply will develop your last pieces. Oops, sorry. What's wrong with this? Ah, okay. And then you should castle away with your king and yeah, it's all good. So instead I want to show you what Kiparazza played because from a pa I mean, the computer thinks that this is another mistake, but I think from a practical point of view, it's understandable that Kiparazza wanted to make the game as complicated as possible. And that's why he played g5. g5 attacks our bishop and well, yeah. In this position, there are many good moves for white. So we just simply follow Jababa, who took the knight. And then black took the bishop. Jababa took the pawn, so he's up another pawn. And now, finally, black played a6. Jababa went in with a check. The bishop took the knight, the pawn took the knight, and the king went out to d8. And now black's threatening rook to e8, pinning the queen and winning material. So 
Chababa played bishop e2, nothing wrong with this move. And after the rook e8, he simply grabs another pawn. The computer, the computer already said that Chababa's up plus six. And to be honest, yeah, we have some kind of problem with our king development, but that's nothing compared to black's problems, right? I mean, let's be honest, it's just simply a good position for white. Anyway, Kiparatze went in with knight to d4, and here Jubabo played king f1. And there's nothing wrong with this move. I mean, white's still much, much better, but there would have been an even better move, and this is the simple queen takes f. Oops, sorry, queen takes f7, because um, the tempting knight c2 check doesn't work because after king e2, knight takes a1, we have the little nice move queen to f6 check, and black cannot play a rook e7 because of the mate. That's clearly, that's clear, and. If he moves out his king, then we simply have the knight to g4 check. King has to move out, and after d7 check, king has to move again, and we get a second queen, and now the game is pretty much over. Computer already says that it's made in 29 moves. I'm not showing you this, because no human has to know that it's made in 29 moves in this position. Just play the position, you're easily winning, right? Um, I just want to jump back to move four because in this position, so it was position after d4, knight f6, knight c3, d5, bishop f4, c5, taking center. Um, I told you earlier that whenever black plays c5, you should watch out for knight to b5 moves. And of course, in this position, it would be possible as well because we would threat knight to c7 check. But to be honest, it's a pretty bad move in this position. And I want you to pause the video and try to think about the position and why it's not good to move knight to b5 in this exact position. I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, um, I want to give you a little hint. In the game we played e3 and after knight to c6, bishop b5 is, uh, knight to b5 is good because our bishop is guarding the knight. In, oops, sorry. In this position, if we would move our knight to b5, then our bishop wouldn't guard the knight because it's blocked by the pawn. So that's my hint. I hope that helps. I give you three seconds again to pause the video. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The solution is that after knight to b5, black could simply just play queen a5 check, attack the, the knight and the king at the same time. So we have to move back our knight. And now after c takes d4, queen takes d4, and knight to c6, threatening e5 for the next move, black's already much better. Uh, the best move compared to the computer would be queen a4, but after queen takes, knight takes, e5. That's not a position you want to play with white, don't you? Computer gives it already as plus two for black, and yeah, I think it's horrible. That's not what we want to achieve when we play the Jababalan system, right? So just keep in mind to always play e3 before you jump in with your knight to b5. Well, let's conclude what we learned today. Well, at first we learned that whenever black plays c5, knight b5 is a good option. But keep in mind that you should play e3 before so that your knight is guarded. That's point one. Point two is that in this position, and you will gain this position, I already told this, um, did I already told you this? Not sure. But if not, um, here comes another nice information for you. I checked my Leeches games. You can download your games on Leeches and just put it in a database and check it out. And I found out that I had this exact position 13 times on the board. I think that's not too bad for a position that's already winning after five moves. Uh, 
five or four, just as you wish, but yeah, it's pretty good. Don't you think so? So you should keep in mind that in this position, Black's best move is e5, and then you should take with the pawn. And here you should just know two more things. First is that a6 is the best move, and here you should remember the fourth sequence I showed you earlier. I mean, you will find the moves on the board, I'm pretty sure, but just run over it one more time and it will help you to remind you. And another thing you should know, uh, the other thing you should know is that when black moves away his knight, then you have another little tactic, and this is the queen sacrifice, because black cannot take the queen because of the check, and this is game over for black. So I hope you learned something, I hope you liked this little video. If you did, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and let me know in the comments if this was helpful. See you next time.